Hello and welcome to the IELTS Multi-Step Program. Today, we're going to be dealing with the listening section of the IELTS, which is one of the most challenging areas that most non-native speakers of the language have problems with. Why is this? For a lot of people, when you ask them, what is the challenge that you have with the listening? You hear things from, I can hear what they're saying, um, it's too fast for me. Um, some of the words are quite um, mumbled up or jumbled up and um, I have problems with maps, with interpreting maps in the listening. I have problems with the last section of the IELTS, with the IELTS of the IELTS listening, where you have one person talking for such a long time. All these challenges, all these complaints are the frequent things that you hear from most test takers. And over the years, we've compiled a series of tips that are guaranteed to help you navigate your way through all these challenges or the frequent challenges that most test takers have. For those of you watching from home, I would advise you to please avail yourself of a pen and a paper and take your time carefully to listen to every tip that I will be sharing in this video as they are practical tips that you need to take your time to put into practice and see how you can deploy them before the day of the test. The listening test in the IELTS entails the test taker to listen to a tape and answer questions that will be assigned to that person. It follows this format. It is the same for both the academic and the general training models as there is no difference for the listening test. You have four sections with 40 questions. All questions carry equal marks, which is one mark. In section one, you have social context topics where two speakers interact over um, context or things that could happen to any of us in a social setting. You could have um, examples of things that you could have there. You could have someone call to make an inquiry. You could have someone call to clarify uh, a deadline or a timetable. You could have also some, you could have someone also call to clarify a particular schedule. All these things are all social context situations and they are easy and very clear. And most times, people do not fill the first section of the listening test in the IELTS. Section two, you have a monologue. In section one, it's a conversation between two or more speakers. In section two, you have a monologue, which is one person talking. And this time also, it is also in a social context. Section three is usually an academic context where you have a conversation between three to four speakers. Oftentimes, the, co the topic of the conversation revolves around things that you could find in an academic setting or you could find in a school. Section four is a monologue and it's also in an academic setting. Usually, you would hear a lecturer giving a talk or giving a lecture in a classroom and you will be asked or you will be tasked to pick out specific information from the tape that you will be listening to. All the recordings in the listening section are played only once and you will not have an opportunity to listen to it again. So you need maximum focus for the listening section of the IELTS if you intend to succeed. 40 minutes total duration for the listening section of the IELTS, 30 minutes to listen to the tape and 10 minutes to transfer your answers into the answer sheet on the day of the test. Tip 1. Practice for the listening section using the official answer sheet. Download it, print it out and familiarize yourself with it. Why is this important? The listening section of the IELTS has a peculiar answer sheet designed for it. Most people have problems transferring their answers which they would have either marked or highlighted on the question paper onto the answer sheet. And oftentimes we discover that test takers do not use the 10 minutes allotted at the end of the test. They do not use it well in transferring their answers. For a lot of people, they have a problem with shading. For some, they have a problem with actually writing with pencil in the small boxes that are provided on the answer sheet. There is no use getting to the aisles and having the first time that you interact with the answer sheet being that day that you are sitting in the exam hall. It is better, it is practical, and it is wiser for you to have 
constant interaction with the IELTS um, answer sheet before the day of the test. So, download it, print it out, or better still, get it online or get it from someone who has written the test before and make sure that you practice, practice, and practice as much as possible to familiarize yourself with it. This is the first and most important tip that you need to know for the listening test. The second thing you need to know is this. The listening test is a multitasking activity. You are at the same time listening, reading the questions, and then writing out your answers. Three things, listening, reading, and writing. This, and this means that if you do not practice and the day of the test is the first time that you have any interaction, that you have any exposure to the listening test or to the format of the listening test, you're in for a shock. As much as possible, please practice, practice, and practice as much as possible before the day of the test. Tip two, you only hear the recording once. I know I mentioned this before, but it is worth repeating. You only hear the recording once. Why is this important? For a lot of test takers who practice for the test, you hear them, you see them playing the listening tape more than once just to get their answers right. So you see someone practice a listening test, which is supposed to take a total of 40 minutes, and they use two hours to practice that test. And at the end of the day, they come out feeling Oh, I'm so good. I got 40 over 40. I got 40 out of 40 in the test. No, sir. Newsflash, you did not get 40 out of 40 questions. What you did was to waste so much time, which would not be given to you in the exam. If you really intend to practice, you should, as much as possible, practice under exam conditions with a timed test. Ensure that you finish the listening test in the time allotted. So for those of you who practice or for those of you who will be practicing, endeavor not to pause the tape, not to rewind the tape or not to listen to it another time again. Because on the day of the exam, you would only be allowed to listen to the listening tape once. Tip three, use a pencil. Now this might sound like an obvious tip, but it is somewhat, it is a tip that a lot of people disregard and they end up getting into trouble for. The answer sheet for the listening test in the IELTS is a computer-based answer sheet. It is marked by a computer and it would also be fed in into a computer for them to read the data on it. If you're using a pen, chances are that you might have your ink blot out some key places that the computer is supposed to read. So, the most preferable um, writing material to use in the IELTS, preferably for all the sections of the IELTS, is a pencil. We will get into that in more detail when we get to the reading and the writing sections. But for the listening section of the IELTS, you are using a pencil, preferably a pencil that is dark and legible. Tip number four. You can write all your answers in lowercase or in uppercase, except in instances where the speaker or the instruction on the test states specifically that you write in a specific case. Preferably, I would advise you to write all your answers in the uppercase. And why is this? If you're writing in the uppercase, chances are that your writing is going to be much more legible, it's going to be clearer, and it's going to be quite big. And also, writing in the uppercase ensures that you automatically slow down the pace of your writing, which ensures that you would have lesser errors in writing, which will be smudged, or you're writing in a cursive, and everything just goes in a sprawling arc that nobody can read. Ensure that your writing or that your answers are as legible and as clear as possible because there's no point in you getting down the correct answer which nobody or no machine can decipher. There are some specific questions that would require you to write your answers in a specific case. For example, in a conversation between two speakers where one person asks for an email or asks for a website, and speaker A says, oh, the website is www.prepclassng.com, all in lowercase. That statement specifically clarifies that your answer should be written in lowercase. If you write that type of answer in the uppercase, you will get your answer wrong. So, 
ensure that you are clear about the case that you are putting down your answers in. Is it in the upper case or is it in the lower case? If you're writing in the upper case, ensure that you stick to it throughout, except for cases where the question or the instruction says otherwise. If you're writing in lower case, ensure that you stick to it throughout also too, except for instances where the question or the instruction says you should do otherwise. The next tip, which is tip five, that you need to know and you need to focus on for the listening test is this. Ensure that you comply with the instructions attached to all the questions. I've discovered that a lot of test takers over the years fail in the listening test or in other sections of the IELTS because they fail to read instructions. I'll repeat this. Every piece of ink on your question paper in the IELTS is important. Again, every piece of ink on your question paper in the IELTS is important. Read all instructions. Ensure that you understand what the instruction wants you to do before you attempt any question. A key type of instruction that you will be getting in the listening and the reading sections of the IELTS would be the exact will be instructions on the exact number of words to write for a particular answer. So you could have a question and you would have the instruction reading, you may write one word and or a number, or you write no more than two words and or a number. Your competence in deciphering and interpreting these instructions is an integral part of your success in the listening or the reading section of the IELTS. Please ensure you do not exceed the exact number of words that, are, that you've been instructed to write. Or if you're writing below that number of words, ensure that you're getting the key word in a series of words. What do I mean? If you've been told not to write no more than three words and the answer to your question in that um, listening test in that listening test is, uh, for example, the paved quadrangle. I'll repeat that. V, T H E, paved quadrangle. And the question says that you should write no more than three words. The operative word, the key word in that question is what? The quadrangle. And the adjective that qualifies what type of quadrangle is what? Paved quadrangle. If I write paved quadrangle as my answer, I would get the right score. If I write the paved quadrangle, I would get the right score. But if I write the paved only without writing quadrangle, my answer would be wrong because quadrangle is the head word in that phrase. The next tip that you need to be very, very particular and aware of is this. Spelling is important in the listening test. It's a listening test. You are expected to write out your answers or to pick information from what you can listen to and write it out. Which means that if you write out your answer and the spelling is wrong, you cannot be assumed to have written down the correct answer. Please ensure that you write down the correct spellings for every word, for every answer that you are putting down in the listening section of the IELTS. The challenge for most non-native users of the English language comes in three places. The first one is a number, that is plurals. A lot of people write down answers and the answer is a plural that requires an S or that requires an IES. And most times you find people writing down the, single, the singular form of that particular word. This would ensure that you get the wrong mark for that question. Another challenging area where people have a lot of problems with, where most non-native speakers have a lot of problems with in writing down the answers for spelling in the listening test is part where they mention names, that is proper nouns, which are names of people, names of places, and names of probably streets or objects. Here's a news flash for you. If a name is mentioned in the listening section of the IELTS and it is not a common English word, it will be spelled out. What does this imply? Once you hear a word that is spelled out clearly, or if the speaker or any of the speakers takes the time to spell out a word, please, and please know or be assured that that word is an answer for one of the questions that you're going to be facing in the listening section. Any word that requires to be spelt and is not a common English word 
will be spelled out. For every other word that isn't spelled out, the assumption is that it is a common word in English language that a test taker should have no problem writing down the correct spelling. Spelling is important, essential, and it is assessed in the listening section of the IELTS. Tip number seven, all words and numbers are counted. I'll repeat that, all words and numbers are counted in the answers for the listening section of the IELTS. What does this mean? If I have an answer and my answer is a holiday, that's two words. It would not be considered to just be one word. So the, the tip that I gave earlier where I said that please read the instructions clearly and ensure that you interpret the instructions clearly for when you are asked to write a exact or an exact number of words. In writing down the exact number of words, you must know that every mark that you make on your answer sheet will be counted as part of the number of words for that particular question. So, as much as possible, it is important that you take your time to practice questions that require you to write an exact number of words and ensure that you stick to the instruction. If you've been asked to write two words, make sure that you write just two words only. If you've been asked to write no more than three words and or a number, ensure that your answer does not exceed this specified instruction. The next tip is this. People ask questions. Which is more preferable for me to write? Words or letters? What do they mean? In the IELTS, you are given a multi-choice question, a multiple choice question. And you have a question that says, in um, which year was the city of China founded? Or which year was the city of China discovered? This is a hypothetical question. And you have options A, B, C, D, and A, B, C, and D. Option A says 1975, option B says 2007, option C says 1867, and option D says 1345. What are you writing? Are you writing the options, the alphabets for the correct options, which is A, B, C, or D? Or you're writing the numbers that are attached to those alphabets? Please, as much as possible, this is also the time where you are expected to do what? Read the instruction. Every question type has a specific instruction attached to it. Oftentimes, or most common, is write down the correct option, either A or B or C or D. As much as possible, I have seen test takers fail woefully just because they did not heed the instruction in either they should write out the letters or the words. Please, as much as possible, do not fall into this trap. It is a very smooth and easy way to fill the aisles if you do not interpret the instruction or stick to what the instruction wants you to do. Some specific question types, which like questions like matching headings or matching sentence endings, will tell you to write down the correct Roman numeral. So, for example, those type of questions could have questions 35 to 40, and you are expected to match questions 35 to 40 with options that are given to you, options from Roman numeral I to Roman numeral IX, which is number 9. And you are expected to write down the correct Roman numeral, which is I to IX. The instruction states this carefully. If you go ahead and you do not write that, and you write what is specified in, if Roman numeral I has the sentence, Landry likes football, and you go ahead and you write Landry likes football in the exam, you would have filled that question woefully because the instruction says that you should do what? Write the correct corresponding numeral, not the sentence or the phrase that the numeral carries. This is a very easy way to miss out on the IELTS and I see a lot of non-native users of the language or test takers miss out on their desired scores for the IELTS because they make these flimsy excuses of an error. Please do not be part of them. Tip number nine, do not try to understand everything in the listening tape. It is not possible. 30 minutes of listening tape for 40 questions. Chances are that for those 40 questions, you do not need information that exceeds 15 to 10 minutes. 
which means that the remaining 20 minutes is what? White noise. White noise that you need to tune out so that you can focus on the specific information that you need to answer the question. So, while focus is an integral aspect of the listening section of the IELTS, you do also need to be selective about what you're focusing on. I've seen a lot of situations where test takers start the listening test, start the listening test and when they're listening, they try to jot down or they try to take notes, jot down everything that they can hear. This is the wrong approach or the wrong strategy to use. And why is this? Because if you're listening to a tape and you endeavor to take active notes and jot down everything that you can hear, you do not know if everything that you've jotted is relevant or necessary to answer the questions. So what should you do? Let the questions be your guide. For the listening section of the IELTS, you will be asked to look at the questions or read the questions first before you listen to the tape. This avails you the opportunity to predict or to focus on the specific areas of the tape that you need to answer the questions. Please do not focus on every single word or utterance that you can hear on, in the listening tape, but only on the specific areas that the questions direct you to. You cannot try to understand everything that will be said in the 30 minutes tape. It is impossible, it is difficult, and you are setting yourself up for failure if you do this. The next tip is this. Use the time given to you to check the questions before the tape starts, effectively and productively. This is a tip that a lot of people disregard. The listening section of the IELTS requires a lot of focus, like I said before, and this puts an inordinate amount of fear in a lot of test takers. What happens is this, before the listening tape starts, their minds are focused strictly on what they want to hear. And they are prepping their mind, they are prepping themselves to, start the to, to hear the start of the tape. Disregarding the question paper that is lying right in front of them. And even when the narrator or when the person in the tape says, please take some time to look at questions 1 to 5, before you hear the tape, they do not listen to this. They disregard this. Do not be a part of this. What you should do in the time allotted to checking out the questions is check the questions. And you're not just checking the questions only, you're doing it effectively. And how do you do that? Read each question. Identify a keyword in each question. It is this keyword that you're putting at the back of your mind so that when the tape starts, once you hear the keyword, it signifies to you that your answer is close by or is nearby. And all you do is that you open your mind and pick out that relevant information that is attached or that follows immediately the keyword. Reading the questions allows you to predict what type of information you're listening out for. If I read a set of questions, questions one to five, and if I see that question one to five is a note or is a table that requires me to complete um, the details for a particular person, for a speaker who is calling a train station to find out about the, the, the dispatch times for different trains, and questions one to five is getting down their bio data, name, address, um, age, and um, the cost of the train tickets. Reading those questions, reading the question first gives me an opportunity to see that these are the key details that I need to put some focus on when the tape starts. So when the tape starts and the tape goes by saying, oh, hello, my name is Lanry and, and this is, is this the Strathclyde um, train station? I'm calling to make inquiries about a possible ride to Dover in the next three days. And he says, oh, welcome, Mr. Lanray. Where are you calling from? Now, because I've looked at the tape, because I've looked at the questions before, when I hear questions like when, when I hear words like when, where, how much, I know that they are going to be mentioning details that are relevant to the questions that I'm answering. And I am much more prepared and better set to capture or to grasp those details than someone who hasn't looked at the questions, who has no idea of what he should be listening out for and is just listening to the tape on a blank slate. Next tip. 
always keep your eye on the next question. This simply means that you shouldn't focus too much on one question as the answers come very quickly. For example, three answers can come in the rapid succession, so you need to have your answers, you need to have the succeeding questions in view. What do, what do I mean? So, questions one to five requires that I fill out the bio data of the speak of the caller to a train station. And section one says, name, uh, question one, name, question two, time, question three, address, question four, um, the cost. And all this information from question number one to question number four can be embedded in just two sentences. Now, imagine if my focus is just on question one, wasn't to listen to question one, and when I hear question one, I'm relaxing and taking like three other seconds to go to question two, I would miss out on the flow of information. The flow is quite fast, so you need to be prepared for the next set of questions. So do not focus on one question to the detriment of the succeeding ones. Rather, I would advise that you take those questions in chunks. So when the, question, when the listening tape gives you the instruction to look at questions 6 to 11 before you start listening, it means that 6 to 11 is a full chunk that I'm taking all together and I'm listening out for the information needed to fill those questions at a stretch and not just individually. Next tip, make notes. I mentioned this earlier about active note taking and I, and I touched on the fact that a lot of non-native speakers feel the compulsion to write down everything that they can hear from the tape. This is not how to make notes for the listening section of the IELTS. What you're doing, the notes that you're taking are guided by what? By the questions that you have seen. So when I have checked the questions and I have an idea of what I'm listening out for, I am taking the notes, I am taking notes specifically of those details when I hear them in the listening tape. Please, the speed of the answers means that you do not have time to write long sentences. So what do you do? You should write in shorthand or you should write in abbreviations or you should make notes in a format that is short and easy for you to understand and decipher when you are transferring your answers to the main answer sheet. So for example, if I'm listening to a conversation between two students and Landry says, my name is Landry and I'm studying business management. What I would write as my notes will be L equal to B-U-S-M-G-T. What does that mean? That's just shorthand for Landry equal to business management. When I am transferring my answers, it is easy for me to interpret what I have written and write out the full format instead of me trying to write Landry studying business management. The seconds it would take me to put down that sentence will ensure that I will miss the next set of questions that I need to answer. So please, when you're making notes, try as much as possible, use abbreviations, use shorthand, and write down short, short phrases instead of long sentences. Tip 13, voice changes. You should be prepared to take note of voice changes as they usually indicate a non-verbal cue in communication. A higher or lower pitch than normal indicates something is wrong or something has changed in the conversation. I'll give you a very classic example to illustrate this. There's a conversation between speaker A and speaker B. For the purposes of this um, example, we'll say speaker A is Aaron and speaker B is Landry. Speaker A says, Speaker A, Aaron, Landry, I'd like to visit you this weekend uh, for a timeout. Speaker B says, Okay, I stay in Ibadan. Ibadan is a rural sleepy area, rural sleepy town in the southwestern part of Nigeria. And Speaker A says, Okay, what can we do for fun in Ibadan? And Speaker B says, Well, we could visit the ShopRite Mall and we could also go to the cinema in Ibadan. And speaker A says, ShopRite? Cinema? In Ibadan? Okay. And the question is this. When speaker B replies, what, uh, what emotion does speaker B's reply or response convey to you? When speaker B says, ShopRite? 
cinema in Ibadan, the pitch of his voice goes higher. That high pitch indicates something. And what it indicates is that Speaker B is expressing what? Disbelief. This is a classic example of how voice changes can affect or, or contribute to nonverbal cues in communication. Tip 14. Always prepare for gaps between answers. This is a challenging one for a lot of non-native users of the English language. In between the sections in the IELTS, you have uh, a 5 to 10 seconds gap. Now, you know that for the listening section of the IELTS, your focus is top-notch and your focus is totally 100%. Between the, time that sec uh, between the time that a set of questions finishes, maybe let's say from question 1 to 6 has finished, and then you have like a 10 second gap before they start question 7 to 13. That 10 second gap is a very precarious time for a lot of test takers because this is the time that your attention wanders. Don't allow it to wander. What should you do to fill in that time? Use that time to read the questions. Use that time also to figure out, to predict what else you're going to be doing. And what do I mean by predicting what else you're going to be doing? For every question that you have there, you have underlined some keywords there. I mentioned this earlier at the beginning of this video. You have underlined some keywords or identified some keywords. If you don't want to underline in your, in your question paper, you've identified those keywords. The next thing that you're doing is that you're preparing synonyms for those keywords in your mind. You're preparing alternatives for those keywords in your mind. So that when the listening tape starts and they mention any of the variants of those synonyms that you've prepared, you are much more poised to grab that detail and put it down as your answer. Do not allow that 10 seconds to 5 seconds gap to distract you in the listening test. Because if you do, chances are that before you pick yourself back and get back in line for the listening tape, you would have missed the first two or three questions that, have, that come after that, pause. Next, conversation answer traps. The IELTS listening test is divided broadly into two areas, monologues and conversations. Conversations is when you have more than two speakers interacting and a monologue is when you have just one person speaking. For conversation, there's a peculiar trap that a lot of test takers fall into. And this, and this trap, is based on the fact that we do not listen, or most testicles do not listen carefully to the last utterance in a stretch of conversation between two or more people. What does this mean? Always listen to the last utterance in an exchange between two speakers as answers are usually hidden at the end because answers are often changed. In natural conversation, when you are talking to someone else or you're talking between two or three people, most times our decisions undergo two or three changes before we decide on a final thing. For example, in a conversation between speaker A and speaker B about what to eat for dinner tonight, speaker A says, could we take rice? And speaker B says, no, I had rice yesterday. I don't think I want to eat rice again. Let's take beans. And speaker B says, and speaker A says, no, beans upsets my stomach. Why don't we take a mixture of rice and beans? And speaker A says, we need to get stew before we can take rice and beans. So I think that might not be the best option for us to take. And speaker A says, okay, so what do we take then? And speaker A says, I think we should just go back to the original suggestion that you made earlier and take that one. What is the original suggestion? Rice. Now imagine that you, in your haste to answer the questions, the first thing that you heard was, what should we take? Should, what should we take? Speaker A says, rice. And, and Speaker B says, no, let's not take rice. Let's take beans. And you go ahead and you put down beans, waiting for the next question because you feel that you've gotten the answer to that one. Not listening to the last utterance in that exchange between the two of them. This is a very significant pitfall for a lot of test takers. And I have seen it account for why a lot of people fail the listening test. So do not fall into that trap. Ensure that you are calm and careful enough to listen to the last utterance in every exchange, in communication, in a conversation before you make a decision. The next tip that you need to know is this, is the role of synonyms and paraphrasing. When we started this um, IELTS multi-step program, I mentioned that synonyms and paraphrasing 
will feature prominently in all the sections of the IELTS as we will come back to refer to them over and over again. And this is one of those situations. Look out and listen for changed words and expressions in your answers and questions. When you read a question, you have identified a key word in that question that you are going to listen out for in the tape. Once you hear that keyword in the, in the tape, or once you hear a synonym or a variant of that keyword in the tape, it alerts you to the fact that the information that you need to answer that question is either close at hand or is the next thing that will be mentioned. The challenge for a lot of test takers who have gotten the hang of identifying keywords and listening out for the keywords is that they usually think that the keyword that they identified will be the exact thing that they would hear in the tape or that they would read in the passage that's for the reading uh, for the reading section of the IELTS and this often is not the case eight out of ten times you will have the keyword changed or a variant of it used that is a synonym used or the whole sentence or, of, or utterance is paraphrased as much as possible do not allow this to alarm you and do not get into any panic because of this your knowledge of synonyms is an indication of your language competence and it allows you to communicate effectively which is why it plays such a prominent role in the IELTS when we get to the practical section of this program where we will be where we will be answering questions and dealing with different question types we will illustrate how the use of synonyms can help you succeed exceedingly in the listening part of the IELTS. The next step, or the next tip, sorry, is to listen for plurals. Plurals are a very dicey and tricky aspect of grammar for most non-native speakers. A, non a native speaker of the language might mention a particular plural of a word without the S being stressed. And this is where the challenge comes in for a lot of non-native test takers. They do, not, they do not hear the S or the IES that indicates plurality for most words. What they do hear will just be the singular version of the word and they put that down, whereas the answer is a plural. For example, how many places, how many ways can we get to, uh, how many methods do we have of getting to heaven? And the answer is there are seven steps and what you heard is there are seven steps and you go ahead and you write step instead of steps your answer is wrong now while this is not a question or it's just a hypothetical situation that i've been used that, that i'm using to illustrate why plurals are important in the IELTS it is a it is something that you will encounter during your practice and i am sure and i'm very sure that you will practice before you go for the test because if you do not you're setting yourself up for failure listening for number which is plurals in speaking is one of the greatest challenges non-native users of the english language have remember that if you write a word without the s it makes the spelling wrong and your answer wrong too use the questions to predict if your answer will be singular or plural what does this mean when you read a question, it would indicate if the answer that is needed to fill in that question is either a plural or a singular. Most times, if this question is in a sentence or if you're just putting a word to complete a sentence, this is one of the easiest ways to decipher if you're needing a plural or a singular word to fill in the right answer. As much as possible, this is one part that you want to take note of so that you do not end up writing the correct answer in the wrong format. Another important tip that I have mentioned earlier when we were discussing the introduction to the IELTS multi-step program is guessing is highly recommended. For the 40 questions that you will be facing in the listening section of the IELTS, chances are that you might not hear the answer for two to three of them depending on how competent you are. You cannot leave those three questions unanswered because each question carries just one mark in the IELTS and leaving those three questions unanswered ensures that you're getting 37 or below. So what do you do? Guess. People tell me that how can I guess for something that I did not hear? And I tell them 
if you read the questions, if you're following the flow of the conversation, of the questions, of the information provided in the IELTS, you should be able to predict or you should be able to guess which answer will be appropriate for a particular gap that you have left in your questions. This is something that you can only do when you practice and practice and practice more. This is when this becomes an easy strategy for you to deploy. Without practicing, it is very difficult for you. Another reason why people find guessing very difficult is because they do not trust the power of their mind or their subconscious. When you're listening to the listen tape in the IELTS, your, all the things that you're listening to sinks into your mind, into your subconscious. When you need any information, your mind goes deep down and plums itself and recalls that information. Most times, we need to trust that our subconscious has gathered all the words that we need, all the information that we need to answer the questions in the listening part of the IELTS. For example, you're answering questions 1 to 10 and you skip number 10 and you're getting to number 12. And then when you get to number 13, they mention something that confirms what you thought you heard for number 10. Do not disregard this. Go back there and put down, some, and put down the answer that your mind has propped up for you. Chances are that you are usually wrong or you're usually right, sorry. Do not disregard your instinct. Most times, it will lead you to the right path. Finally, practice, practice, and please do practice before you enter the exam hall, as there is no guarantee, there is no substitute for practice before success in the aisles. Finally, I'll list out the different question types that you will be encountering in the listening section of the IELTS and in the practical session, in the practical video that I promised earlier, we will and we will deal with each question type and deploy and give you strategies that would ensure that you conquer any fear or any challenges that you might face. The question types that are most popular or that would come out of the listening section in the IELTS are multiple choice questions where you are expected to choose the right option out of four options given A to D. Map completion. You will be given a map and some areas of the map or some sections of the map will be left blank and you are expected to label those sections with the information that you can hear from the listening tape. Diagram completion is also a variant of this. In these two areas, that is map and diagram completion, you are dealing with visual data, you are dealing with visual information, but using what you can hear to complete visual information. The easiest tip that you need for this section is to have a pen or a pencil and put it on your paper and trace what you can hear. So if the listening tip tells you that now you get to the entrance and you put your pen on the entrance and you move up, you go up, and then you go to the eastern side. And then when you get to the roundabout on the southwestern part, you move it too. This makes it easier for your mind and your eyes to follow through with the information as opposed to someone who just waits and is looking at the map and is listening to it. What that person is doing is that person is stressing their brain a lot because your brain is not only listening, absorbing the information from the audio um, format which is coming in, you're also looking at the visual information and plotting the graph or plotting that mental picture in your mind. This is a lot to tell your mind to do. Help yourself by using a pen or a pencil to um, give yourself some sort of visual reinforcement for what you can listen to and trace it so that it becomes easier for you to follow through with the information that you're listening to. Another question type is the form completion. Here you're given a form and you're expected to fill in the details that would complete that form. Note completion, table completion, and flowchart completion are also variants of this type of question. The only difference is the flowchart completion. In a flowchart, you're given a process and you're expected to fill in the information that would complete the process or that would fill in the sequential steps in the process or the sequence in the process. All these are variants or different types of questions that you will be meeting in the listening section of the IELTS. You have sentence completion questions too, and the implication for sentence completion questions is that whatever options that you're putting into the gaps in the sentences must grammatically complete the sentence or must be grammatically 
correct. Here, your knowledge of grammar is also relevant because if you're filling in a particular word in a sentence gap and that word does not sound grammatically correct with the sentence, you have chosen the right, wrong answer. Any answer that you're going to be using in sentence completion must grammatically complete that sentence. Summary completion is also another very another type of question that you will be facing in the listening test. Short answer questions are also another type of question that you will be facing in the in the listening section of the IELTS. And finally, I mentioned before, table completion. These are all the different types of questions that you could come across in the listening test of the IELTS. And like I mentioned earlier, there will be a practical session where we would do short, short videos on each of these question types and we would give you the strategies that you will use to answer those questions, illustrating them either on the board or on a green screen for you to follow through step by step. The IELTS multi-step program is designed to ensure that you achieve maximum success in the IELTS and you do not need to take it more than once. When you watch these videos, the best way to maximize the benefits that you will be getting from these videos is to ensure that you practice all the tips that have been given out to you and I can guarantee that you will move from a band 6 or a band 5 to an instant band 8.5 or band 9. And that is a guarantee.